Hello. Thank you. Hello. Yes, once again, on episode 23 of Junk Doctor Who. Oh. I have glasses on there. Uh, this week brought to you by Chick fil A and Planet Fitness. No, 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 no. We don't have any sponsors, although we wish we did. But he works at Chick fil A, so he brought me dinner. Yeah. We have a sponsorship contract with the BBC. What? No, we don't. No. So <laughs> April Fools! <laughs> it's going to be April 2nd by the time you see this. Uh, by the time they see it, maybe, maybe. But today is April Fool's Day. It is. Four one. So uh, if we make lots and lots of jokes during this podcast, don't worry about it. All right. What are we drinking? Sangria. Sing. Wait. What is this? Seagram's escapes Jamaican me happy. <laughs> you sure this is the ingredient? All right. All right. And I'm drinking. I don't know what this. Is. Yeah, it's, it's super fruity. <laughs> it's it's some fruity. Girly drink, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> That's but, what I'm like. But you're <laughs> lightweight. Yeah, you're lightweight. <laughs> Just like you couldn't do keto. You couldn't drink anything. <laughs> we got to find you a hard I thought water in the stomach. With tea and vodka. Or yeah. Um, or, uh, um, what's that? Uh, scotch and water? Scotch and water? That's a thing? That's a thing. Oh, where are you drinking? Right. Well, Russian so standard vodka, vodka, my norm. Vodka. Although I have been branching out lately into the, the rum. Mm. Mm. You drinking rum? Rum or, uh, yeah. Like Captain Morgan? Yeah, of course, Captain Morgan. And I've got a... What was the one I had a little while ago? It was a... Black Label. No, not the Black Label Captain Morgan. No, it was a whiskey, wasn't it? Oh. Or, yeah, yes. a single scotch malt whiskey. Something like and that. And that was pretty good. Was yeah. I there for that? Huh? Was I there for that? I think you were. I just don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Today we watched The Ark, mm-hmm. just simply called The Ark. The Ark. Um, it was the 23rd serial of Doctor Who, aired four episodes, aired from March 5th, 1966 to March 26th, 1966. So it almost caught up to us in terms of today being April 1st. What are you putting up here? Antagonists. Oh, the antagonists. The monoids. The monoids were the antagonists. And uh, the common cold. And the common cold and uh, what's his face? What's his face? Oh, Zentos. Zentos. The okay. persecutor. Well, you do. Yeah, kind of. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. Anyway, this is um, kind of unique in the, the fact that it is, I think, one of the. It's the only. F- no, it's one of only a couple of full serials. And it's bloody as all get out. <laughs> well, if you include the monoids, then. All right. It's one, of, it's, it's one of only three full serials that exist with Dope. Like I said, she's an incredibly annoying character. I don't like her. Nobody likes her. At least her <laughs> accent changed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's less grating on the ears. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, tone it down. Yeah, the, the previous one she had this tone down the, call, the accent and it was all harsh. Oh, Gavna. Yeah, yeah she, she <laughs> muted it to just more of a general Holy. London accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Get um, off me car. <laughs> <laughs> get off me car. What? Okay. Now, this get is... Okay. And this is one of only three serials that fully exist for season three. No, the, okay. Her real name is Dorothy something? Uh, Dorothy Doolittle or something, so... And she's the uh, ancestor of the girl that died in Troy. On the... She's the... What are you talking about? That one companion that died in the Dalek's Master Plan, but then they found her ass. Nope, the one that they left behind. Troy? But then they found their ass ancestors way later, so she lived. Oh, you're talking about Vicky. Vicky's the one who stayed behind in Troy. No, Stephen was mad about the doctor not bringing someone with him. But then they found out that she must have lived because the... No, 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 that wasn't Troy, that was Saint something Saint. Oh, Massacre, Massacre of Saint yeah. Bartholomew's Eve. Right. Is that not Dodo? Right. Is Dodo not the ancestors? Something, something. Long, long. Yeah, long. yeah. And that's one of her. Out. Yeah, one of her ancestors was the girl that escaped that the doctor sent home. Yeah. And that happens again in Doctor Who because there's a an actress who plays a servant girl during um, the late 1800s, okay, who uh, 
they, they, they think she may may have died, but then turns out, and I think she does die, I don't remember, but it turns out uh, the same actress plays a young lady in Torchwood, um, who's her great, great, great niece or something. Um, but anyway, so they, they've done that before. They do that later. And the high school is end up, ends up being named after Barbara and Ian. Right, right. Specifically what did we, more Barbara, we, but yeah. We passed that out. Did we pass that already? Did that already happen? No, it happens much later. Yeah. Much later during class or That's something like that. All right. That was a anyway, call there. So this is season three. Notice the episode's missing from Galaxy 4. Everything in red is missing. Um, the mission the unknown is missing. Uh, the Myth Makers is completely missing, and the Dog's Master Plan, now the episodes are missing. So, this is the first full serial that exists from Season 3. Hopefully, they're going to go back and animate all the rest of this, uh, which is why I'm buying the Blu-rays. Uh, solely to fund the... I'm solely to fund the animation and everything else. You were yelling at the BBC last episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You're like, listen, BBC. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No problem. Um, yeah, those of us who are buying the Blu-rays are almost solely doing it so that you will Blu-ray every season, which means animating all the missing okay, listen stuff. listen here, BBC. We know you're watching. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> we know they are. <laughs> here are turns. You're we, hopeful. We will keep buying. We, I mean him. <laughs> we'll keep buying the Blu-rays well, on one condition. Eventually, you'll keep buying the blu -ray. You'll buy the Blu-rays. I will? Well, I could, I could see you someday going through and buying the seasons we've already seen as we go along so you can have your own collection. Okay. But on one condition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they haven't put it. Cool but they, they haven't completed any of the first three seasons yet. Okay. There's still something missing from each of them. So uh, they haven't released any of them on Blu-ray yet. Um, all they have to do for the first season is... Oh, okay, oh, hold on. Just before we get into that. All right, so this is the rest of season three. Most of the Celestial Toy Maker is missing. Uh -huh. um, but the Gunfighters is all there. All, that's all the Savages is missing. Glory. Oh, it's, it's like every other one. Yeah, every other one. And then uh, the, the, the War Machines is all there. This is where we get rid of Dodo. Dodo's in for one, Spoiler. two, three, four, five serials. Yeah. But she was everyone's favorite. No, she wasn't. She's annoying. She uh, Oy, God, no. speaks a lot. Speaks up a lot and has a sort of uh, "don't you dare do this" kind of thing. I feel like she was added as a as a comedic kind of, but it didn't work out. Yeah, uh, during the Celestial Toy Maker, probably like seven pins in the arm of this. During the Celestial Toy Maker, um, there's an episode or two where Hartnell kind of takes off for vacation Just again, and uh, so Dodo and um, Steven pull the weight of it. That and this really weird. Fat guy. Um, <laughs> Me? I was it? No, you're not fat. No, this, this, at worst, you're a little plump, but this guy was very rotund. Like a pear. Like a pear. <laughs> so you're in great shape. Pears are shaped, right? Pears are shaped. The circles are shaped. <laughs> um, but um, but uh, this guy is rotund, kind of. Um, um, I'm trying to think of another good word for that. Rotund. Husky. Eh, no, Fluffy. Not, you could say it fluffy. fluffy. You could Big say bones. you could say obese, but uh, yeah. I like fluffy. That's that comedian. Um, but anyway, so yeah, all they have to do for season one is uh, Marco Polo. It's the only Marco thing Polo. missing from well, season one. Yeah, one and they they should do that and put out season one. Mm -hmm. Season two, the only thing is two episodes of the Crusade. Mm -hmm. Literally, Let's all they have to do is animate two stinking episodes, episodes, and they can put out season two. But I, I'm assuming they want to put out season one first. Um, they've got well, a they don't do anything in order. They they don't they don't. they got ways to go on season three though. Season three is the hardest one. Um, four is what they've been animating because the Macro Terror comes out in October here. It's already out in, in Britain. Not right, but and they've already done the Power of the Daleks. So they're, they're going through and slowly but surely uh, fleshing out season four. <clears throat> mm. Which is interesting because then they've got to do the smugglers. Because this season, um, the first Doctor had the first two serials. Mm. All right. Anyway, <laughs> back to the arc. Okay. Um, this is one of the very few times. Another covenant. Huh? Arc. 
So not the one of the covenant. Different yeah, yeah, different art. Um, not Noah's art, different. Right. In fact, she mentions she was Noah's Ark, Ark, and they she's have like, no Noah, clue. Like about. Noah. Yeah, and they have no clue she's talking oi, about. Oi, governor! She can chase her. I think to be fit, you know, fifty <laughs> millenniums on and not know, you know, the Bible. Fifty-seventh I mean, segment of time. time yeah. Um, so they show up on this Ark, and the Earth is about to, the Earth's about they to be destroyed. Inspired. During the episode, yeah, it just fell apart. The Earth's about to be, um... What happened to the Earth? It just got too old. <laughs> it's just a smoky ball. <laughs> okay. Do you... Okay, do you want the answer that fits in with Doctor Who continuity? Yeah, I have a question about that. Like, what exactly is going on with the human timeline? Because that is really them visiting the end of humanity on Earth. Right, it? right, but the... But yeah, eventually the Earth's gonna die. Yes. I mean, it's gonna fall into the sun, or the sun's yes. gonna explode. Yeah, like, think, think of uh, the movie Knowing. You know, mm -hmm. like God said, you know, last time we destroyed the Earth with a flood, the next time it'll be fire. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason I love that movie because it fits with the biblical yeah. perspective. So, but okay, in modern Doctor Who. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, there we go. First series. First series. No. Yeah, that one. Okay. No? Yeah, that one. That's the first one. Oh, that's going to be the same series. Oh, yeah. in the, there, in the first series, the one I have on Blu-ray. Uh-huh. Okay. They were, they were releasing those uh -huh. series, on the first four series on Blu-ray, yes. but they only did the first one, and they stopped, and they didn't put two, three, or four out on Blu-ray, mm -hmm. unless you bought this box set of Tenet. That's the only time they put on Blu-ray. They were supposed to release all those on Blu-ray, um, but they didn't. Uh, hopefully they're gonna revisit them later when they get the other seasons done. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so the first Doctor in his second episode mm -hmm. takes Rose to the end of the Earth, and they get to watch the Earth explode. The 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 Earth, you know, all the life's all abandoned it, mm -hmm. and the Earth's gonna fall into the sun, and. They've held on to the Earth with gravitational pulls, because that's where the human race comes from, sort of as a museum. But now they're finally going to let it go. And literally, in theory, that can fit in with this. Yeah, because up until now, they've kept the timeline of the dogs invading, everything that's happened to humanity. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, that just gets more and more cluttered. As, yes, That's yes. not what happened to Star Wars. They filmed the episodes, and they wrote all the books. And then they rebooted it, and then rebooted oh it again. Books. And when they rebooted it the second time, they're like, you know what? These books, not canon, because they literally Forget about them. they've covered everything that happens to Luke, but we still want to use that character, so just we're they rewriting were. it. So they decanonized it. Hmm. So do you think that'll ever happen to Doctor Who, where the timeline just gets so muddled with so many different things? No, because because they've experienced the end of Earth. Well, no, because so now that's done. They've literally rebooted the universe at one point. They reboot the universe. <laughs> they reboot the universe. That's a cop out. Okay, well, <laughs> yes, it was, but it's it it was kind of necessary. Um, they literally at the end of season five, re series five, series five, reboot the universe. Mm. And to be fair, it was done well. Okay. It's, it was the end of the really, really good stuff that Moffat did. Um, after that, there are glimmers of, hey, to be fair to Moffat, Series 5 was good because he kind of kept the same storytelling style and the same um, production style as, uh, I can't think of the guy's name before him, Russell T. Davies, as Russell T. Davies did before him as showrunner. But the problem was, was that after Series 5, everything gets weird, crazy, complicated, and uh, just messed up. But uh, the end of Series 5 is really good, but they reboot the universe. So in theory, we don't know if everything in the universe is the same or not. It could all be the same, but it could all be different as well. Very confused. Right. Don't worry about it. It's science fiction and it's Doctor Who. So I don't think there's any problem with continuity. But it would be interesting, and I think some people have made videos online where they show, they go in order of every episode in universal chronology. You should make one of those. I should. I, I would have to really work with my editing software. Um, I do I'll, now I'll have, be your editor. 
You be well, you do the no 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 no. I'd be an editor. I love editing stuff. Well, then why don't you edit these? Because the whole point of this is free I mean, flow I form. Mean, yeah, yeah, we can have the free flow form. <laughs> it's hard to say what you've been drinking. But you just put an intro on and then an outro. Well, we, we could put an intro on it. I mean, I'll, we, we I'll have to make an intro. intro. You I'll make it. You work with the intro. Uh, just one click of what. Okay, you work with the intro, but um, the custom thumbnails we have them. I'll have to make new ones because we don't have Ian anymore. We don't have Ian. Um, I do. <laughs> I need a computer. Yeah. Um, computer. But anyway, um, no, no, no. I have editing software where I could edit stuff. I have to play with it. Just but anyway, so the but some other people who have already done this. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, is, you have to go back in and, and re, uh, redo it every time there's a new series. Mm -hmm. You know, you wait till the series is done, and then you go, okay, now we're gonna put these in the actual timeline of, of history oh, uh, of the universe. Yeah, uh, and other Sounds people- Sounds like it's better as a Wikipedia page. Yeah, <laughs> and other people have gone through and they've made, uh, they've taken all the episodes, all the stories, mm -hmm. All the serials, yes. and they've gone and made little clips of each one, just just short little thing, mm -hmm. and they've gone through the entire history of Doctor Who uh, up to this point. I haven't seen one yet with Whitaker, but I've seen them uh, through Cap the end of Capaldi. Yes. Um, anyway, so but anyway, this is way, way, way in the future when you're dying. Uh, if you've seen only the new stuff, think you know the second episode of um, Eccleston. Uh, when he takes Rose to the end of the world. And I think it may actually be called the end of the world. Is that a romantic journey? Uh, yeah, they, she's crushing on pretty bad. Yeah, the end of the world. Uh, uh, Serial 162 is just that episode. Um, or Story 162. Um, but anyway, so it's the 699th episode of Doctor Who. Oh, 69.9. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <That song. laughs> but anyway, so... The human race has left the Earth, and they are on a, a spaceship which holds animals and a jungle, and mm -hmm. and they've miniaturized most of the human race and and into these little trays. Yeah. Think, what was that really petri bad? Petri dishes. Yeah, petri dishes. What was that really bad movie? Um, yeah, downsizing. Yes, yeah. I haven't seen it, but I heard it was awful. Bad. The, the best thing you can say about it, it says three very distinct acts. That's the only good thing you say about it. Um, the, the guy in that movie is treated like absolute crap. It's so bad. Um, that's it. Yeah. But the, yeah, the movie, the best thing I say is very that's a, distinct a recurring acts. Theme in Hollywood. Oh, these days, yeah, they hate men. It's, you have a penis. You're, you're screwed. We, we hate you. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, yeah. Believe it or not, there are good men. There are men who do not rape I women. Don't it. Yeah. <laughs> There, there are men who treat people with respect, and there yeah, there are men who do not lie. Believe it or not, um, <laughs> you never told a lie. Um, not a long it. time. I believe it. How are you a saint? Mm, well, only in the fact that any Christian is a saint. That's yeah. true. That's right. Anyway, so they they land on this ark, and they land in this jungle, and it takes a little bit for Dodo to. Understand and believe that it's not some zoo outside of London. Yeah, like London Park Zoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Westford or something. Uh, Westshireford or something. That sounds right. Yeah, Westbury or something. She thinks it's a zoo, like right outside of London. And it turns out it's not. They're on this big spaceship that's left the Earth because Earth is dying, which is shown with really bad special effects in this and much better later on in the new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, to be fair, Eccleston season. Mm -hmm. The special effects were still questionable, mm -hmm. but by the time Tenet shows up, they're awesome because the BBC said, we've got a hit, give them more money. <laughs> nice. um, so, uh, so they're on this voyage to, what's the name of the planet? Refusus. Refusus. Yeah. Look they're on the Refusians. Refusus 2, and it's going to take them like a thousand years to get there, and by the time they show up, there's 700 more years to go or whatever. Mm -hmm. And... Dodo has a cold, and these people way in the future, their bodies can't deal with the common cold because it was wiped out here. way back here. Yeah, kind of like what's happening now with the uh, what's coming back. Oh, the mumps and stuff. Measles. Well, the measles have I think always been there. Is it what's the mumps? Smallpox. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're stuck coming back because illegal aliens are bringing it into the country. And, and, and we about wiped it out. People but aren't they're they're immunizing bringing, their children anymore. Oh yeah, anti-vax, anti-vaxxers is what they. Right, they don't right. Don't believe um, in vaccines. They Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey is one of those. Is he? Uh, yeah, or at least he has yeah. been because he was dating a big anti-vaxxer, and he That's, may. To be fair to him, he may have just picked up the cause because he, you know, really liked Hollywood. this young lady, and we've all done really silly stuff because we really liked you. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a male trait <laughs> slash. Uh, um, falling. <laughs> People aren't getting vaccines anymore. The mm. diseases are coming back. And, and New York, uh, I think city or state, has recently voted to disallow people who haven't had their vaccinations Oof. to go to school hmm. because they'll get the other kids sick or something like that. Um, when I was okay, now that when when I went to school, you didn't have. I mean, you had to have certain vaccines, but not everything. Now, now to go to tech, you have to have a meningitis yeah. shot. I had to get one of those to go to college. I'm like, what? My brother had spinal meningitis three times. Oh my goodness! Sounds right. Um, they figured out that uh, okay, my family has a problem with deafness, mm. with hearing. Uh, my grandfather was deaf in one ear, which is why he they they sent him home from the Second World War. He he. Back then, if you didn't enlist, there had to be something wrong um, mm-hmm. because everyone enlisted because it was the big war. Mm-hmm. Um, the end all wars. Yeah, no, no, that was the first world war. Oh. The war to end all wars. The war to end all wars was World War One. Mm. Um, but it didn't. Well, it didn't obviously, <laughs> yeah. The and that was also called the big one until World War Two came along um, because World War Two made World War One barely deserving the name yeah. World War because it was that much larger. I love World War Two. Um, but anyway, so my grandfather went in and they fa- figured out after a while during boot camp, he was deaf in one ear, his left ear, so they sent him home, so he mm-hmm. didn't get to fight. Um, because you've got to be able to hear the commands, you know, mm-hmm. and pass on the information. But anyway, like being a telephone. yeah, essentially. So my you know, mother, you know what? <laughs> my mother's also deaf in one ear, my brother is deaf in one ear, but anyway, the ear that he was deaf in, I think his left one. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the somehow he got the spinal meningitis uh, bacteria in the ear, and so he, he had it the first time, and they they were like, okay, well, we we you know we've cured him, he's good. We we didn't know he was gonna make it. The second time he got, it, they said this is incredibly rare, but still po- uh, still happens. Mm-hmm. The third time he got it, my mother was like, you figure out what's going on and <laughs> fix it, because the the odds of that happening randomly were infinitesimal so they f- went through his entire body and finally figured out it was something in his ear and they fixed it hmm, and uh, he hasn't had it since but just just to have a meningitis shot to go to tech just you know to go to university seems yeah. weird yeah that's uh-huh. yeah, so odd i i can't remember the last time i had any that's the scenes. only shot they require to get it it's so weird yeah. i um yeah i I'm getting older and I should start getting vaccines and I guess colonoscopies. Ugh. Yes. But I haven't you had are any of that yet. 50, I'm 50. Yeah. That's where we to start that. Yeah. That's where you get cameras. Yeah. Dude, I'm on um, places. In places you don't want to. Nothing's a secret anymore. <laughs> Dude, a lot of places have seen your discounts start at the traditional age of 55 rather than the modern age of 65. I feel like there should be a 50. Uh, colonoscopy senior discount. You should get a senior <laughs> discount on your on your, um, on your, your, on your Well, eventually you do. It's called uh, <laughs> Medicare, but that's a sixty five. But, but they so, keep moving it up. Well, but was it they have to because we're living longer. So, yeah, my mom keeps skipping out on it. Like, like the year before she was old enough, they moved it up like five years, mm-hmm. and she's like, dang. <laughs> well, they did the same. She's retired. They did the same thing with the drinking age when I was uh, young. Yeah. I was like, oh, they moved it up on you. Well, yeah, they moved, they moved from 18 to 21. The federal government did, they, okay, it's a state's rights issue. Yes. But the federal government said states who don't do this they don't get will lose funding. their highway yeah. funding. Mm-hmm. So I think Delaware might have been the last state to hold out because they're tiny or something, or Vermont or somebody. Mm-hmm. But eventually all the states moved it up to 21. Because yeah. um, they want money. Because <laughs> they want their own. To be fair, the federal government should be doing that crap yeah. because they take the money from the people of those states anyway. Yeah. The state it should be of the states, but um, would you call yourself a what's the word libertarian? Is that with less government 
That's yes, it. that's that's the less government, more freedom. I, I, I mean, feel like I'm, I'm leaning towards a libertarian. Yeah. I, I'm a conservative libertarian. I I'm, vote. I'm for less government. Right, right, right. I vote Republican. I I was a card carrying member of the Libertarian Party for 17 years, hmm. and then I switched to Republican because I disagreed with libertarians on two things. After after 9/11, mm-hmm. our oceans don't keep us safe anymore in this modern day and age. Hmm. We do need to have some proactive things to keep the fight over there. Libertarians don't want to do that. The other thing was the abortion issue. Unfortunately, the libertarian platform allows for abortion, um, but I'm very anti, I'm very pro-life, very anti-abortion because it's the taking of a human life. They're coming out with a movie about that. It's no, no, it came out Friday. Oh, did it? came out three days ago. The surprise uh, Unplanned. 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 It was number five this week in the box office. office. Yeah, yeah. It took in six million Define and beat my expectations. It made more than the Trump movie. <laughs> the, the Trump movie? Yeah. They made a Trump movie. They made, wait, a Trump movie or an anti Trump movie? It was a pro Trump movie. It was really weird. It was about this guy who was a uh, Christian who got prophetic visions about how Trump was going to become the president. <laughs> it was really, really weird. Yeah. Weird. Sounds like a Dinesh D'Souza thing or something. Um, I don't know. I like Dinesh D'Souza, but um, he's kind of a conservative version of Michael Moore, where he goes out and makes his movies, and he gets into trouble occasionally. <laughs> Michael Moore should get into more trouble. He He's factually <laughs> questionable, to say the least. He lies a lot. But uh, Dinesh D'Souza got into trouble... Um, some sort of tax thing, I forget what it was, but he ended up, he ended up going to jail for like 30 days or three mm-hmm. months or something. But like, he, um, he makes Martha reasonably Stewart. good sort of films. Oh my gosh, yeah, Martha Stewart. Was she, in jail? Uh, she was in jail like a year or oh so. My um, that sucks. Yeah, if they can't get you on something else, they'll get you on tax evasion. That's how they got um, um, Scarface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's again a bunch of mobsters. <laughs> or uh, <laughs> these days, they'll get you on perjury. Which is why at this point, just just plead the fifth continuously, because that way they can't end up in a perjury trap. I hate that crap. Mm. Um, trap. Yeah, it, basically it is. It's hey. illegal to okay. It's illegal to lie to Congress. Is that a monoid? That's a monoid. Yeah. It's illegal to like cover. Yeah, it's illegal to lie to Congress. It's illegal to lie to the FBI. Mm-hmm. So if they think you're lying, you end up going to jail. It's just crazy, even if you're telling the truth or if you misremember something. That's not constitutional. Hmm. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know if all that stuff's constitutional, but I'm sure it's already been aired in the Supreme Court. Hey, this picture where they're, they're touching the elephant isn't actually in the video. <laughs> all right, they, they were. That's when they're extracting the brain bacteria for the. No, no, that elephant was laid down. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it was a monoid sure. there. All right. Ah. Anyway, oh my gosh, how do we get so off topic every time? That's our political section of the podcast. <laughs> We don't, well, let's say we don't do a political section, but it seems to happen it's, half the time. About every other podcast. Yeah, about every other podcast. Okay. Anyway, so they show up in this thing, and uh, Dodo's got a cold. So she gets the humans and these other creatures, this the monoids. The first <laughs> yes, okay, the monoids, which are these monocular, you know, a single they eye. They have a mouth with an eyeball in it. And they kind of waddle like penguins and have really. We don't know where their mouths are. (laughs) Because they they can't talk. (laughs) Yeah, they can't talk. (laughs) Any voice boxes. They speak this crappy, made up looking sign language, which is just. It looks awful. It looks awful. It doesn't look convincing at all. Well, I don't don't think they have the the capability to do the letters. My problem is it's very inconsistent because at first, you know, there's the monoid in the court. And then you had the other dude who was translating to the monoid in right. sign language. It's like, do you sec- accept this, um, uh, what was it, verdict? And then verdict. he was like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so do he you translated. Take, so I thought, take this verdict? Yeah, so I thought that they just had the eye, like they didn't have ears or mouth, so they couldn't hear. But later on, it, it, they could hear, and then they're just talking back to people who are verbally talking to them. And, is is weird. That's actually a weird <laughs> like sometimes experience. they could hear and wait, sometimes wait, 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 they couldn't. Wait. Maybe the voice box also receives. But I think they're talking back to people who are verbally talking to them before the voice box. I might be wrong. 
I thought they yeah the one that's helping the doctor cure the cold seems to respond. Yeah, like the doctor's just asking him to pass them the trains. Right, not even looking at him. Yeah, yeah. Inconsistencies, but you know it's know. Doctor Who. You get used to it. All right. <laughs> Better once they got a voice box. But anyway, so spoiler. Yeah. Okay. So the monoids are showed up on our planet and been living with us. And they their planet on Earth. died. Yeah, they should have won. Their planet died, so they settled on Earth with the humans. And when the Earth was dying, we took them with us. Although I guess if they showed up on our planet, they would have had their own spaceships. They could have gone on their own. That that's actually maybe an interesting long, long question, long plot hole. Yeah. yeah, maybe they crash landed. Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, maybe they lost the the knowledge over the eons. But so they. Offered to be servants to go with the human beings to Refusus II. Right, two. Now, Refusus II. Where was the first Refusus? It, okay, this is probably the second planet in the solar system. Huh. Like, Earth would be Sol 3. What? Because our planet, <laughs> our sun's called Sol. Huh. S O L. Um, but, so, Dodo gets everybody sick, monoids and humans. A bunch of monoids die, like five or six of them, and then eventually a human dies. And these human beings on the Ark, who the main guy was friendly. Uh, what's it? What was his name? The commander? I, I missed his name. They just called him leader and father a lot. And commander, yeah. I don't well, the, the, his daughter called him father, yeah. But anyway, so he was friendly, yeah. but the, the, the second guy in charge, Synthos, he was not. He was very... Zealous. Antagonistic. Arrest, yeah. arrest them. No, invite them. <laughs> right. So, um, because the human race had cured the common cold, mm -hmm. uh, before the, the, what are these guys called? Uh, monoids Mons. showed up. Uh, they had never experienced it. So they, at least yeah, the, the human body had, a, had some kind of mm -hmm. ability to fight so it. The monoids, monoids were dropping like did. flies. <laughs> right. The, the monoids were did. So this I think is it's just one human that died from the cold. Yeah. Um, before the doctor figured out. So Dude. they lock up the doctor and his companions. Um, they have a trial, and during the trial, this is the second episode, during the trial, they sentence him to death to be ejected out of the airlock. Yes. Okay. Um, the doctor. Before but, that happens, Stephen passes out because he's from the cold, running yeah. a few. So if it's just a common cold, why does. Why is Stephen running like a severe fever? Apparently, it's a very vir virulent form of it. Virulent, yeah. Dodo was fine. She just well, had, she had, she well, had the sniffles. It, as it all does, she had. Anything you get affects some people worse than others. Um, some people, sometimes, you just happen, I could get a cold, and then you could be up, you know, held up for days. But I feel like Stephen was, you know, on the verge of death himself without the doctor's. Cure, he would have recovered. Yeah. Probably. But his <laughs> fever needed to break. It looked just as bad as everyone else. Yeah, his fever needed to break. And so they, uh, the doctor works to... Apparently he knows of a cure for the common cold that we have figured out in the future, two or three centuries off, yes. which involves animal... Animal brain membranes. Brain membranes <laughs> or something. Um, I think an elephant and a salamander. Some sort of lizard. Uh, and the, or something. the doctor was about to say, and he's like, I need the so and so from these two animals, and then it cuts, but then it shows them extracting it from right. the elephant. Right. So I think it was an elephant you know, and some sort uh, of lizard. So it sure. may Komodo have been dragon. an iguana or maybe a Komodo dragon. Yeah. 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 But anyway, yeah. some sort of reptile. Some sort of big reptile. So the doctor gets the cure of the common cold, cures everybody after mm -hmm. about six people have died, but he cures everyone else. And. Three or four. Uh, monoids and like one human. Do we want to? I, I wrote that human down in our death count, but he didn't die on screen. They just verbalized that a human died. But several of the monoids so, died on screen. Scratch that one out because that. Wait, but several monoids. Died. Yeah, I covered the monoids. Uh, I'm okay. just not counting the human that we yeah, see. This, that. yeah, this particular uh, think, serial has a lot, a high death count. We, at some point, we decided that the death has to be on screen for it to count, right? That sounds good. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't yeah, know that that sure. during the. Um, yeah, have a cookie. So that being said, we uh, eleven people died. Uh, eight of which were monoids. Yeah. Ooh, I'm stuffed. I'm stuffed. The monoids died a lot. Chicken. Um, chicken. A lot of chicken. Was... Yeah. Um. Anyway, so 
there was this plan to build a statue and it was going to take 70 years to build a statue because they were doing it over a long period of time. I, don't, I still don't know why it takes 70 years. Uh, that reminds me of, I think it's Russia or Germany that's doing the same thing. They, they're making this sort of, I don't know what you call it, art exhibit mm -hmm. statue. It's kind of like Stonehenge. There's these big slabs of stone that they're Monolithic. putting with it. Yeah, but, well, not like super big, but probably, you know, bigger than a person. But they're only setting one up per year, so they said it's going to take them 700 years to finish the whole thing. Like, they have the whole thing down wait, on wait, blueprints. Wait, really? Yeah. Okay. I don't is... remember if it's Germany or Russia that's doing this, but it's some sort of art thing. Hey. And so far they have like 12 or something they've been doing for a few years. Hey. Um, it's like the Temple de Seguidia La Familia or something like that in Barcelona. Um, uh, Gaudi set up and designed it. And they've been working on it like a hundred and something years, right? And they're almost done. But it's taking forever because the plans are so intricate. Mm -hmm. But as the building was being worked on, uh, it's all funded by tourism money. So people go there, uh, like my wife and I have been there, and we see the building, and then you know you pay your five euros or whatever to get in, and that goes towards funding the completion of the building. Mm -hmm. um, when I went in 96, 95. When I went in 95, mm -hmm. I saw it, and it changed a lot when I went back in 13, 2013. It changed in those 18 years a lot. Um, be, and it's almost done, but it's all funded by money from tourists going to see it, mm -hmm. slowly but surely. Um, they have a, I like that idea. Yeah, they have a couple buildings like that, um, one of which was this Catholic church. Or a cathedral type of really big, massive. Place. Well, that's what most of these are. I saw it in Mexico, and it's been under construction for like hundreds of years. <laughs> They're still not finished. And another one um, I saw in Utah, where the Mormons are. I wasn't allowed to like see it, like be in the building because I wasn't Mormon. Right, right. They're very but protective. It's their Mormon temple, and the Tabernacle. reason. Yeah, it's on the, they call it the, the reason it's been under construction so long is because one of their prophets said, once this is finished, Christ is going to come back. And he hasn't come back, so they <laughs> just keep adding they on. keep adding on. They just keep, keep prolonging the construction because they don't know he's coming. <laughs> I like that, like the Winchester the, house. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay, um, there was this kind of crazy lady who was the daughter of the guy who invented the Winchester rifle. Oh, okay. So this guy invented the Winchester rifle and made and sold a lot of guns. Mm -hmm. So she inherited all this money uh, from from all those guns, and she was kind of off a rocker, right? Mm -hmm. She thought she was haunted by the ghosts of all the people who died from the Winchester rifles. She was, and this was in California. So she kept having things added to her house. There are stairs that go nowhere, like like dead end into a wall. There are rooms and, and things and stuff. And anyway, the places... Trying to confuse them? Huh? Trying to confuse the ghosts? Right, trying to confuse the ghosts, <laughs> exactly. So the ghosts would get lost and not be able to haunt her. Uh, there was a movie made about it recently with Dame Helen Mirren, I believe. Oh. Uh, I love Dame Helen Mirren. She's one of the few women I would have really accepted as the female, the first female doctor, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. she has gravitas and a great ability to act, unlike Whitaker. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, so she she was fantastic. Uh, she's a fantastic actress, but she um, apparently the movie wasn't that good. Mm -hmm. But I would love to see that house. It's a tourist attraction now. Uh, I would love to go there. Um, and I think it's in California. Mm -hmm. um, I think. But anyway, so... Um, the statue is taking 700 years to build is supposed to be, it probably took a whole <laughs> thousand, is supposed to be a human. But the doctor and his companions leave, and the TARDIS, of course, she has a mind of her own, um, brings them right back to the same place 700 years later when they're about to land on uh, Refusus, mm -hmm. Refusus 2. And they walk out of the TARDIS, and this is one of the very few times that A, 
we show what happens later on in the same place from the doctor and his companions being there already. They traveled in time, but not space. Right, and we see um, as one of the few times. Well, that you, they did travel in space because the spaceship traveled towards Refugius. So they <laughs> but they land in the same spot, the spaceship. Okay. You're correct, but they, they say that in the same time this week. Yes. <laughs> but, um, but it's one of the few times you get to see direct results of the doctor and his companions meddling or visiting or whatever previously. But they they land at the end of episode two and they see that the giant statue is finished with a monoid. Yeah, face. monoid eye. Now, one of the things I think is a plot hole is that apparently the revolution where the monoids took over, because you find out the monoids took over in a violent revolution recently, yes. um, happened within like, like just a few years or maybe a decade before. Mm -hmm. But the statues finished with the monolith. But you would think it would have taken maybe a hundred years to finish the head. But somehow the revolution, they changed it and finished it within a very short period of time. I have a time. theory about that. Okay. So I think, here you go. <laughs> The monoids were encouraged by the humans to do research of their own and to do different things. Mm -hmm. So they made their the they voice made their box. voice boxes. They made their heat guns, and I think heat they rods. were heat rods, <laughs> prods, prods, like a cattle prod. <laughs> and they, uh, I think they're also they had this secret master plan of making the Fisher device, and they're working on that secretly. And then um, the only reason the humans said that the statue took so long to build was they're doing it in accordance with how the ancients used to build statues. So they're intentionally prolonging the building of the statue so all the generations could experience it. I think the monoids didn't do that. They just uh, built the head real quick and then stuck it on top of the statue once they took over. Right. Okay, you're thinking like kind of like a family quilt. Yes. Where, where that's, where, that's what the leader's added, daughter yeah, is telling. Okay. Like, so, and okay. then she showed him the blueprints and she's like, okay. We're doing I, I can roll with that, I can roll with that. And um, I think the, the mono is just It's kind of those people in Colorado. Stuck head on it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of those people in Colorado who are building that castle, but they're doing it the old fashioned way where you have to mm -hmm. cut all the stones. I think I heard about that. Yeah, except once a year, one day a year, uh, they're not allowed to actually cut the rocks from the uh, quarry the old mm -hmm. way. So once a year, they have to use dynamite to blow the rocks out of the quarry and then cheating. cut them. The cheating because, doesn't Well, no, no, no. The problem is, is Colorado <laughs> won't let them. Colorado says it's illegal to cut stones the old-fashioned way Why? Or, or from the dangerous? quarry because it's dangerous. Yeah. So they have to use dynamite <laughs> to blast a big sheet More off. Less dangerous and then than they, mine. Then dynamite. they cut it into the stone shape Dynamite's by less hand. dangerous than cutting it from the... Well, you're not there when the dynamite goes off. You're, you're <laughs> way back. Um, well, like handling and setting those. Well, they've got people who know how to do that stuff, you know? And people who know how to cut stones. Right? Well, true, but uh, <laughs> apparently they don't want amateurs cutting stones off of a quarry rock wall. But anyway, so... I don't think it should be illegal. Uh, well, neither do I. It's the libertarians. <laughs> um, but anyway, so they're building the, a castle the old-fashioned way, mostly. Um, the government won't let them do it completely. Must take forever. Right, once again, <laughs> taking forever. But anyway, so apparently during the 700 years, very recently, maybe 10 years before, that'd be my guess, the monoids led a rebellion and took revolted. over as overlords of the Ark, the ship, and the humans are now subjugated and slaves. And there are a few who have sided with the monoids, sort of as collaborators. Yeah, well, they're, uh, they're like servants too. Right. They just accepted the... They're, uh, they're yeah. cowards. <laughs> agreed. No, agreed. Uh, you know, like the the French who surrendered in World War Two, when you had the real free French <laughs> fighting from the uh, in the other fronts. What, what yeah, did they Rommel. call those? Uh, no, not Rommel. Uh, Fr um, who fought Rommel? Legionnaires. The French legionnaires. Well, the French Foreign Legion. Foreign Legion. There yeah. Go. Who the heck? Who was it? De Gaulle. Charles De Gaulle fought against Rommel and them in Africa as the free French. Mm. Uh, uh, I like to go. That mm. reputation has forever been <laughs> a stereotype of French people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the new French oh, flag is uh, yeah. white oh, stripes yeah. on a white background. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but anyway, so um, the doctor is captured by the monoids. Uh, the doctor and his companions. I have a question about the monoid revolution. Okay. Revolting. So, <clears throat> yeah. After the monoids revolted against the humans 
and they they threw they overthrew the humans and became the new overlords. Mm. They criticized the humans for being so naive and trusting of the monoids, right? And and for not even fighting back and for being so easily enslaved, right? But apparently it was a a strain of cold. They, come back. they said that it was because of the fever, the cold that Dodo had brought, had sapped their wills. <laughs> right. They tried. Apparently, 700 years later, the cold's still going around. Cold's and there was a particularly virulent strain of it. They said that the doctor... Oh! oh so close. Oh, oh, to... That was a me. Almost a me. Oh. Okay. If you're sober, you would have made it. Maybe. Maybe not. If you're more drunk, you would have made it. Probably. All right. So, um, so I'm right at the good the, buzz level. The, the monoids said that... The doctor's um, cure for the common cold only really fought the initial outbreak, but right. didn't cure it, and it continued to ravage the people. As as a research or something, it yeah. sapped the will of the humans. But it's weird because it affected the monoids worse. And then Stephen turns to the doctor and goes, "Oh God, what if we've spread diseases across other timelines we've visited?" Two other planets. And then yeah. the doctor goes. Yeah, uh, that's terrifying to think about, but we've been mostly well, so hopefully <laughs> but, what, what, but you being well, because you have a resistance to right, something, right. just like um, how the, uh, the settlers in the New World brought right, the, to the Indians, the Indians. Small Indians. Box yeah, and small stuff. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah, let's just not think about that, yeah. let's just but move on. This <laughs> is another case where the doctor's meddling in time, because if he hadn't traveled there and brought the fever, he wouldn't have sapped the will of the humans and they couldn't have been revolted against against the by the monoids. Maybe. And so he's he's impacting the influence of, of the timeline. He's mm -hmm. meddling in time. <laughs> right, he's not supposed to, but he does. But so that's not a fixed time lord. So the the monoids overthrow the humans is not a fixed point in time. Okay, you that's don't know. Well. You don't know. The the fixed point in time stuff comes up later. But all right. So at this point, the doctor doesn't know about fixed points in time. No, he knows about them, but he never mentions it. The same way, like sonic screwdrivers, or whatever. But here's, here's okay, but who knows? The monoids may have always, in every possible scenario, overthrown the humans at that point. It was just in this scenario, this is what allowed them to do it. But maybe in another scenario, they would have done it a different way, or you know, maybe something else. And the humans, like complacency. The humans only survive thanks to the Doctor and Dodo and and Stephen. But they, they introduced the, the cold virus in the first place. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, maybe they're straightening out the timeline. Yeah. So, is it the fit? So, can the TARDIS travel in future in time before the TARDIS was made? It can only travel through time up until a certain point. Like, no. Is there a limit to how far it can travel ahead? No, oh. there is not. It, it actually goes to the beginning of the universe and the end of the universe at different mm -hmm. points, and outside the universe at different points. Outside the universe. Outside the universe during. It's like the end of Men in Black, where the universe is in a marble or something. And yeah, it's not like that. Okay, okay, okay. okay. During Tenet. Uh, okay. First, during Tom Baker, the Fourth Doctor, they go to e space. East which space. is outside of That's where they space. keep eBay and the internet. Yeah, well, well, this is long before, well, technically it wasn't before the internet, but East it was space. before the internet as we know. Electronic it. space. Well, no, no, they go, they go to a place called East Space. Um, and it's during Tom Baker's final season. Where are we? Are we in A Space? I have no idea. We're in space. We're in A Space. A Space, yeah. <laughs> right. And they do that during Tom Baker. Then later on, they go to a uh, tenant. No, no, no. <laughs> Smith, <laughs> Matt, no, yeah, Smith, Matt Smith during his first, uh, his second series, his second series goes outside of our space, okay, outside of our universe, yes, into sort of a pocket universe that's like a little small bubble on the big bubble of our universe. It's very confusing. It, it is, but that's how they describe it, and that's all I've got for you. <laughs> but, um, but he does that. And the what was it the doctor's wife for that episode? Um, doctor has a wife. Eventually. Um, let's see. Um, well, 
He had a granddaughter. I mean, at some point he had a wife. Uh, That's true. Let's see. Hold on. So the oh, wife is before. The, yeah, it's called the Doctor's Wife. That's the name of the episode, the Doctor's Wife. When and during this episode, Cardinal, Cardinal had the wife. Okay, so it was his granddaughter. So he must have had the wife before he regenerated past her. Okay, you don't. Okay, does he have? Does he remarry? Is it a second wife? Yeah. Okay, with the Doctor, it's complicated. <laughs> But the doctor eventually does get married um, way down the line. Uh, but here, the doctor's wife is actually referring to the TARDIS. Yeah. Because the TARDIS is He married made... the TARDIS? No, he doesn't marry the TARDIS. Um, the TARDIS is given a body and she's already basically sentient now she determines where to go. Yes. But she's given a body. Well, and... that's only because her directional circuit was broken. Well, no, she still decides where to go. Right? She decides when there's a problem, the TARDIS takes the doctor to that problem so the doctor can fix it. But there shouldn't be problems because they're fixed points in time. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But that's why the TARDIS took him to the Ark and then took him back to the Ark 700 years later to fix the problem. But um, in the doctor's wife, the TARDIS is given a body and she actually kisses the doctor. It's oh, kind of funny. Wow. Yeah, yeah. She's like, what is it you always call me? Oh yeah, sexy. And it's actually the TARDIS I guess in incarnated the into the, uh, the doc into the... The doctor the, calls the TARDIS... Sexy. 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 No, sexy not sexy. Sexy. <laughs> um, an old girl. She's like, I like it when you call me old girl. It's a very British thing to call somebody old boy or old girl. Old boy. I yeah, or old girl, yeah. Uh, women don't seem to like it here, but some some women, I guess, over there like it. But uh, in fact, during the fourth Doctor, uh, the companion, Sir Jane Smith, mm -hmm. tells a different companion... The Great Gatsby. Old boy. He says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's an old fashioned thing. But Sir Jane tells um, another companion, I can't think of his name at the moment, not to call her old girl because she doesn't like it. What is his name? I can't think of his name. Um, Who's name? The other companion during Tom Baker, the fourth Doctor's first season. Uh, season Dodo 2.12. Second Dodo. No, no, no. Right. Robotic cyborg dog. So anyway, <laughs> who comes back? oh my god, why does it always take so long? <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, the doctor, uh, the doctor is captured by the monoids. Yes. Stephen is kept in the kitchen working with the other slaves, but they send and, and down they, the doctor and Dodo oh. to the planet. Yes. Uh, refuses to monoid two and uh, guardian. Right, right, right. To, to see if the refusions are the, there and what the response is going to be. The, the Guardians are the future humans. Right, right, right. Cool. So, um, they get down to the planet. They don't guard anything, though. Well, they're, they're, guarding, they're guardians of the ship. Like Not know. anymore. Well, well, they, they are eventually again. Should but, be slaves. <laughs> well, only for a few years, but they're so-called guardians. So, they go down to the planet, and it turns out their refusions are invisible. They no longer have corporeal bodies. Because of the do. solar flare. Yeah, solar flare made them uncorporeal. Uh, but they built houses. It's kind of like heaven, you know, I'll build a mansion for you. Because right? they, they knew the humans were coming. Right, because right, they knew the humans were coming because they saw the effects of everything a long time ago. So they built all these houses for humans, even though they don't need them. And they don't like the, the new militaristic monoids. Yeah. yeah. They got mad at them smashing flower pots and <laughs> right, right, right. challenged them. It's a way to make friends. You don't Put break their down. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I made that. So there's a couple of factions that develop amongst the monoids. Oh, and they wear these collars that have the numbers voice on them. Yeah, with the voice boxes, but they have numbers on them for their rank. How did they ever call uh, did they have names before that? Now they're just one, two, through sixty-nine or something. Right, right. Sixty-four, I think, is the highest we see. <laughs> but and, but we know there's a sixty. Right, so. but it's like the prisoner, the the British. I told you that. Yeah, I wrote down the prisoner. Right, the it's British like TV show The Prisoner, um, where they're called by numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. In that show, uh, the guy who turned down me in the first James Bond so he could make this show, which 
who knows if he regretted that or not, but it was, this show was a pet project of his. Why would you not be James Bond? <sighs> because I didn't know it was going to be that big. I mean, Ooh. but I, I love Sean Connery, Sean Connery as too. Bond. Dude, Sean Connery's like 88. And, no? uh, yes. And I, I, I still got a crush on the guy. No. I mean, he I'm straight, but I love Sean Connery. He's kind of I mean, I he has not love enough. Sean Connery. Have you seen him recently? I don't care. I, I don't care. Him. Sean it's, Connery. It's just the voice. I don't care. Yeah, the no, voice is amazing. Dra- what was the dragon movie? Draco? Dragon War? No, dragon no, no, no. War. Um, dragon Heart? Dragon Heart. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Sean Connery right? does the voice yeah. of Dragon. Okay, okay, yeah, dude. I've got a man crush on Sean Connery so, so bad. Uh, I think the only other person that comes close would be... Uh, Ewan McGregor? No, no, Brad Pitt and Fight Club. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Okay, when he shows up at the... When he opens the, the door... The sleeve thing? No, no, when, when, when Brad Pitt oh, opens okay, the door and he's cut. I mean, just you know, muscles and got like, dude. Come gutters. It's like, I'm not gay, but I do that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but it's the same with Sean Connery. I've just got a. Uh, he is not cut. A man. <laughs> no, no, no. He's not cut now. He's but just wrinkly. I don't care. Uh, it's Sean. I don't think he ever was. He's just hairy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, so. You, you, it's James Bond. He's shirtless, but he's still wearing that wool sweater, which is just his <laughs> body <laughs> hair. <laughs> Looks like a Wookiee. <laughs> yeah. But okay, so. From the neck down. From the neck down, he's a Wookiee. <laughs> I have no idea. No, no, no. But like, like. My chest here is mostly white now. Okay, I've got, I've got a good bit of diet. You ever think about? I've got a good bit of black further down, but mostly up here it's white. We'll show us that too. Take it all off. Take it all off. What? I'm losing weight. It's that kind of couch. (laughs) That kind of casting couch. All right, I'm 174 now. Thank you, keto. 174. Uh, I got maybe about eight more pounds to go. Just a little bit of fat left, but but mostly it's pretty good. Um. I can get back in the trying to get rid of your cookie awesome. pouch, or are you want to keep all your cookies? Cookie in the pouch. bags. That's, that's where you keep cookies, <laughs> in, the, in the Chick-fil-A bags. Anyway. And you got that pouch there. A pouch, yeah. Extra cookies. And but anyway, so in The Prisoner, this guy who um, <laughs> retires from, for whatever reason, from the Cold War Secret Service, yes. 1960s Britain. Oof. He retires, and they capture him, and they put him in this village that... The village is actually somewhere in Wales. I forget the name of the actual village mm-hmm. where, where it happens, but somewhere in Wales. But they put him in this village, this idyllic little village. It's gorgeous. And uh, they give him a number, okay? Yes. Uh, I think number five or six. Anyway, so everyone there is by a number, and they go all the way into the hundreds. But apparently it's this weird place where they take spies they've captured to break them and get information from them. I guess, surely. It, it, <laughs> like I'll show you, but they—it's uh, a really weird series and it's interesting. And they, the guy had ten episodes in mind, which is a very British show. But they thought the idea was so intriguing, they demanded seventeen episodes. Mm-hmm. So because that was the minimum number of episodes that you could have for it to be serialized here in America. Mm-hmm. So they made seventeen episodes, and a couple of them are weird filler episodes. You can tell, like there's a Wild West one and stuff like that. Um, but the ending of that series is just the most, it's just the weirdest thing ever on television. It's so you kind of have a season odd. that's less than 17 episodes? Well, well, yeah, lots of British shows have like, well, even modern day... Is that one season or two seasons? No, it was one season. One season. Wait, so traditionally in the 60s, you'd have 40 episodes a season because you didn't really have repeats. Mm-hmm. Then in the, starting in the 70s, like with Doctor Who and stuff, and Gunsmoke and all that, it's one of the reasons Gunsmoke didn't have that many seasons, but it was in the 60s, but it had a crap ton of episodes because there were 40 or so a season. Hmm. And then starting in the 70s, it went to 24, 25, 26 episodes a season. Right. Nowadays, most network shows are still 24, 25, 26 episodes at the lowest 20, mm-hmm. but a lot of cable shows and some network shows are down to like 10 or 12 episodes a season, yeah. like Game of Thrones, uh, which is the British thing which they were doing that forever. Uh, they did that with uh, The Young Ones, uh, Black Adder, just a bunch of their shows are, with here, the, you get six episodes, that's it. That's and maybe five years later, you'll get another six episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
I watched the first two episodes of that. I love Black Adam. Love, okay, I love Rowan Atkinson. Okay. The, the, the first season, he's not quite the character yet. The Starting with the second season, he is the character. <laughs> then they're on. He's awesome. Okay. Um, anyway, so the monoids have the hierarchy with the collars that say one. Ooh, kind of like the stripes in um, yeah. the Ooh, sensorites. Yeah. Yes. In the centroids. So they've got that, and they want to go down to Refusus and they want to conquer the planet, but they don't know that the other guys, the Refusians, are invisible. Yes. Uh, they have a bomb planted in the head of the monoid statue, the one they completed as monoid, yes. on the ship, and they're going to blow up the ship. But there's this big infighting in the monoids between number one and number four. Three is with one. Two dies in a blast on, on the planet. I don't know how you remember <laughs> Two dies in a... Two dies when the shuttle explodes. Did right, right, right. How thanks, the shuttle explodes? Well, it was thanks to the refusion. The refusion. It was thanks to the refusion. So, two dies in that. One and three are on the same side. Four leads kind of a, a rebellion coup. And they most of the monoids end up killing each other towards the end of episode four. That's where all our death counts. Right, right. Well, what's the total death count for this serial? 11. 11 on screen deaths, yes. not to mention all the ones that died off screen. Yes. Eight of which were monoids. All right, all right, and three humans. Um, yeah, only three humans died. So. One off game. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, well, maybe so. Maybe a bunch. But only mentioned one. one human that died from the fever, cold. But it was a couple more game. died of the monoids it in shows the monoids. three and four. Yeah. The dying. one in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and then the collaborator who died on the planet. One of them died outside the TARDIS. Yeah. Really cool. Outside that spaceship. But, so the monoids mostly end up killing each other. F number four is like the last, mo one of the last monoids standing. And when the doctor and them are heading back to the shuttle to go back to the Ark after they figured out where the, after they overheard and figured out where the, the bomb is and the head of the statue, mm -hmm. he just drops his weapon. Yeah. He just drops it and he's saying, that's it, we're not fighting anymore, I'm not enslaving humans, we're done. And uh, that was awesome. And there are several scenes in there where the doctor just looks at the monoids. Yeah. Right, right. Just disappointment. <laughs> right, pure disappointment and, and bafflement and... Uh, really powerful. He, right, he doesn't say the best actors. Can say everything with a look, um, and, and Dane Helen Mirren's that way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know Hartnell here's that way. Um, Connery, just the best actors and actresses can do it with just a look. They don't have to say anything. That's yeah. phenomenal, and Hartnell does it in this. And he, uh, but anyway, so they go they f over here from the main monoid number one that it's in the head. So they head back to the ship, yes. and they. Thanks to the help of the refusions, there's one of the refusions just takes up the sh the whole thing. It's like it's nothing. I mean, telepathic powers yeah. or something. And they eject it into space, literally at the last second, and the ship is okay. And somehow they have a physical form because they sit down, and it shows the seat being pressed in, <laughs> but they're invisible. So it's not only psychic powers, but there's like some. Physical thing there because they're okay, sitting. Okay, you make it a, shows the cushion. Being right, you make a point, but I think it was more for unless our they're benefit. just mentally pushing the cushion. I, down. Right, I think it's more for our benefit, just so we could see that the, that there was somebody there. But so anyway, um, the doctor, the, the refusions say, okay, human beings can occupy the planet, but only if they make peace with the monoids. And the monoids can occupy the planet only if they make peace with the humans, and they all do. Yeah, and they all got. And the doctor encourages this because he said, "Well, you're kind of asking for the monoids to revolt because you treated them as slaves," mm -hmm. which I totally disagree with. I thought the monoids were treated greatly when the humans were in charge, because they took the monoids and they said, "Hey, you know, be a part of our decisions, be a part of our council." They're in the courtroom. They're like, "Do you agree with this?" True sentence, and then they're like, "Well, you should be the one to vote on this sentence because your people were the first to die." Like they treated them right. as equal. The things may have degenerated over the seven hundred okay, years. True. We we don't see the intervening seven hundred years. 
dangerous, huh? So, well, how the the doctor know? How did he... He's the doctor. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, don't ask questions. All right. Speaking of which, what questions? <laughs> I think we covered most of them on the way through. Okay. Okay. Do you have any? I kept left? interrupting you as you're doing your no problem synopsis. Um, so they had like these royalty free sound bites that people will use again and again, like the Wilhelm scream. Yeah. Because you don't have to pay it, it's just free domain, you can use it. Public domain. Public domain. <laughs> One of them, they use a sound that uh, was from Godzilla. <laughs> That's not a question, I just want to recognize a Godzilla. Okay. <laughs> this is, well. Okay, this episode does not predate early Godzilla. Which Godzilla movie are you talking about? I don't know. It's just a Godzilla sound bit okay. that, they, that they use in all the Godzilla movies. Weird trivia. Godzilla is the character that's been in the most movies. That's true, yeah. I love that. All right. Um, okay, and what else? What about um, Stan Lee? He's been in a lot of movies. Not more than Godzilla. How many Godzilla movies are there? 50 something. Oh my goodness, really? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, Stan Lee plays different characters in each of those movies. Yeah, they could all be the same character. But no, I mean, you watch that theory of where he's talking to the Watchers, and then people made this theory about how Stan Lee is a Watcher, and that's why he's in all these different situations. Just no, but that, that sounds cool. Yeah, it's a cool theory. <laughs> all right. All right. Because you remember the Guardians of the Galaxy one of the end credit scenes for. Did you just lose the. the, the... <laughs> Eat cartridge for your pen? No, it's the the clip. Okay. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. There's something else there. I don't know what else is it. Oh, that's a Welch. That's probably from you, sir. That's. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> not intentional. <laughs> All right. You go searching. Okay. So when they first show up on the spaceship in the first episode, mm -hmm. and Dodo thinks it's uh. The, the zoo, the zoo, yeah. And then they uh, they notice the metal roof. And right, there's no. The way the doctor figures it out, it's a spaceship, is because he fills the floor and like the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. mechanical yeah. heartbeat of the ship. Right, he fills the floor and, and it's, it's moving. Fall back. Right, um, that happens later on during um, the beast below. He's below. The beast below during the Lev Doctor's first. C series, um, well, uh, way over here. Uh, Matt Smith's first series. Uh, wait, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the heck are you doing? I'm trying to get. Oh! Oh, here it is. Got it. That's the. the I'm going to flip off. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's see. Boop. Fixed it. Mm. Yeah, here you go. Alright. Eleven Dr. Matt Smith. Um, there you go. Episode 759, The Beast Below. Yes. During that, she checks the floor, just like the doctor does in this, yes. for, for engine vibration. Just like the sonic screwdriver showing up in the first time. The screwdriver. Yeah. No, it's a callback to... Things that come the up second Doctor starts a sonic screwdriver. But Arnold had a screwdriver. Yeah, a screwdriver. It was not a sonic screwdriver. It could have been. No, it was not a sonic screwdriver. <laughs> the second Doctor starts a sonic uh, We don't know it wasn't a sonic. Yes, it was not a sonic. We do know this. The second <laughs> Doctor starts a sonic screwdriver. How do we know it's not sonic? Because he doesn't use it as sonic. That doesn't it's mean it's just, not it's a It's an sonic. actual regular screwdriver. The Does the doctor. actual sonic screwdriver not screw things? It doesn't look like a screwdriver. <laughs> well, maybe it always changes with the generations. So maybe yes. Hartnell's does look like it. No, no, he never mentioned Sonic Shooter, the second Doctor. But maybe just because no, he doesn't no. mention it doesn't okay. mean it isn't. No, but the eleven Doctor, the Beast Below, it's the same thing, but he doesn't feel any vibrations. Mm. So he realizes there's no engine on the ship. Oh. And uh, you'll have, have to wait a few years to find out. Time Lord's out. just extra sensitive to vibrations. So. The Doctor's just bloody clever. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's really clever. All right. uh, what else did you have? Uh, next episode is the toy maker. So the celestial, the celestial toy, toy, maker. Toy, 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 toy maker. <laughs> uh, it's a reconstruction. There's four episodes. Three of them are reconstructions, and the fourth one exists. The last one, the last one exists. That live conclusion. Yeah. Um, and then the gunfighters. It's musicals. Music. No. Intro. Okay. Musical intro. Yes. 
Hey, back in the old days, in a lot of the westerns, they would have musical intros. And this is done during Blazing Saddles, I told you about, which you wrote down the list. I can't believe you haven't seen, you need to see it. But you get really, the, the musical intros. What about Blazing Saddles, though? That's a quote from something. From the we were talking about how black people are misrepresented in cinema. And they're like, what about Blazing Saddles, though? Because he's the mayor or something. Or the sheriff. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that's yeah. just one quote I remember. <laughs> okay. Like, black people never get to be there. They're like, what about oh, Blazing, Blazing Saddles? Saddles? That's Robin Hood Men in Tights, is that it? That's also Mel Brooks. Blazing Saddles That's some is sort Mel of Brooks, reference from Mel Brooks. And Robin Tights is also Mel Brooks. I feel like there's, there's one of Mel Brooks' movies where he references Blazing Saddles. I think it's Robin Hood Men in Tights. Probably. <laughs> um... But anyway, the gunfighters. Uh, mm. It's the end where where Robin Hood's getting married to Maid Miriam, and the king shows up, and then they name and it's Patrick his, Stewart. His, yes, <laughs> and he kisses it and it pays to be the king. And then um, is it Chappelle that plays Robin somebody Hood's like that? Yeah, sidekick Lil John. Is he playing Lil John? I don't know. And then um, it's, uh, what? <laughs> like the King Lionheart Henry King Henry names him the the new sheriff of Nottingham Nottingham yeah yeah and yeah. they're like you can't have a black sheriff and then they go what, what about, about Blazing, Blazing Saddles, Saddles? Oh, okay they're that like, oh. makes sense <laughs> they're like okay <laughs> yeah so it was Mel Brooks referencing this right, right. movie um, that movie did reference all the different uh, Robin Hood films uh very subtly for some of them, like the old uh, Errol Flynn films, okay, but very specifically and overtly for the like the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves, hmm. okay, uh, which was the one Kevin Costner did. And in that movie, Sean Connery shows up yes. as the king. Yeah, Sean Henry. Connery. Right. At the end of Men in Tights, Patrick Stewart shows up as the king, so that was awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, so in the gunfighters, like in Blazing Saddles, like in the old westerns, there are musical intros to different episodes and to different sections of the episode. So, you, so you'd have like a break, and then you just have a little musical intro to it, and that gets really annoying. <laughs> um, the that the celestial toy maker, then the gunfighters, then the savages, and then the Would war you call machines. A fourth wall break. No, it's it's a stylized. Um, okay, back in the day during um, what was it called? Uh, vaudeville. Mm -hmm. Uh, when movies were silent, okay, you would have musical interludes into scenes, and you would have somebody on the piano doing a musical interlude into scenes on stage, into the vaudeville stuff. And I think this is a holdover from that. Have you ever watched Breaking Bad? They do that in one episode, where like out of nowhere, this Mar Marinacci, what is it? Mariachi, Mar 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 Mariachi, band. Mariachi band shows up and they start singing about Heisenberg and what he's doing to like catch you up on the plot. <laughs> okay, it's really weird. Okay, that's fine. That goes back to the Greek chorus in ancient Greek that would sing about what was going on in the plot to help keep the viewers um, up to date. Yeah. That's an ancient Greek tradition. They did that after like a season finale. And then the first episode of the next season, like this mariachi band just shows up and they start singing about what Heisenberg is missing. I haven't watched any Breaking Bad, but that sounds really cool. <laughs> it's the only part ever in that show where it like breaks the fourth wall. It's just like, what's happening? <laughs> well, the, like, like uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer had a single musical episode. Hmm. Uh, different shows will do that at different times where they, where they just say, what the hell? Let's just do this, you know. And they and they like do the Christmas it. special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the Christmas. And so Christmas all of you at home. Yes. You can't do that. Not for. Film. Yeah, we're doing it. Isn't it? All right. Any other questions or anything? That's all. Okay. Uh, we'll see you in about three weeks. Um, yes. Holding the show on family vacation next week. And movie night. And movie then we've got movie night where I'm showing he and his girlfriend Brazil. Brazil. 
Um, him and his girlfriend. I'm showing yeah, my girlfriend him and his and girlfriend. <laughs> okay, if you say subject, girlfriend and I. I if I say that. object, it's him and his girlfriend. I'm so bad at English. I'm like Dodo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Dr. Charles is so cool. We're going to teach, gonna teach, gonna teach me proper English. English. Yeah, <laughs> she keeps using the word fab. Fab. Instead of fabulous. So fabulous. Yeah, it was really She's 60s. She was wearing like these, this uh, yeah. crusade outfit that she. Yeah, the, the, well, the masseuse. And then she. Yeah, and then she put on the circle. The, 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 the 60s outfit, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so. Did they wear that in the 60s? Just bubbles? They wore this? lots of weird stuff in yeah. the 60s. And they didn't wear lots of weird stuff in the 60s. But, um, but anyway, so. Uh, see you in like three weeks? Three weeks. Three weeks. All right. For season three. No, we're not. Three weeks is this season. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. Bye, bye. Thank you as always for joining us. Don't oh yes. Thank you. Like, comment, us. and subscribe to stay updated. We have one comment. One comment. Twenty-three episodes. We have one comment. Well, don't forget to comment and like and subscribe. Mm. If we'll you're see watching. See you next time. Yeah. See you next time. Bye. Uh, bye. Bunk.